Bible says, my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder do you know him. My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. That's my king. Amen. Is Jesus your king today? Amen, sister. Amen. That's my king, King Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Brennan coming to you live from Salem Springs, Arkansas, with a very, very special, another edition of the Fishers of Men broadcast. It's good to be here. And uh, is Jesus Christ your king? Amen. Is he your king? That's my king. Amen. Jesus Christ is my king. <clears throat> And I love them. Hope you do too today. Anyways, it's good to be here with you this morning. And uh, I wanted to do my broadcast a little bit earlier this morning. Um, what a better, what a what a great thing to kind of kick off the day of doing of doing a broadcast. Amen. Um, today is going to be we're going to be continuing our faith series from Hebrews 11, and this is let's see, this is part number 16. Um, so far, I think this is probably the longest series I've done, and um, uh, we're. I think after after this, we're still not done. We still have a little bit left to go. So, please keep me in prayer for that. Please pray for me on that. Um, but today, we're going to be talking about the walls of Jericho, and by faith they fell down. And I was reading. I was reading about this. I was reading a little bit about this uh, last night to prepare for my message today, and um, there is something that a uh, good pastor friend of mine had mentioned about how 
part of this correlates to the rapture. <clears throat> and I read it. I read through it and I'm thinking, well, how could it correlate? And I, I looked at it more closely and I'm like, wow, it does, it does actually, it appears it does have a correlation with the rapture. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about that. It, it has a correlation with the rapture. Um, and you might be wondering how or why that has a correlation to the rapture. And we'll be getting into that. Um, we're going to be getting into... Uh, this is not a tithing message, but it does have a, but it does have a, uh, 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 it does have the principle of tithing in it. We're gonna so we're gonna kind of touch on that today as well, um, and then after that we'll sort of just kind of wrap everything up. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, it's good to be here this morning. Um, let's see here. Let's but before we begin, let's go ahead and get into some prayer requests. Um, if you guys have a prayer request that you would like mentioned, or if you'd like me to pray about, please feel free to put it in the comments, and I will be sure to put that on the list. Sometimes I forget to put things on my prayer list, and I don't always, you know, and so put thank, you know, I have a prayer list so that I remember I'll, I have a list of people who, who to pray for, amen, because sometimes I forget. Um, but anyways, we have a fellow sister uh, please pray for her. She lives in Arizona. Um, please pray for strength for her. She 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 gets really worn out. She basically is like running around everywhere getting things done for her mother. And uh, please pray for her mother. Her mother has dementia. She's not doing very well. She's kind of going downhill. So please pray for her. Um, <clears throat> please pray for a fellow a fellow brother for his family and his ex wife. Uh, for salvation, they are unsaved, according to this fellow brother. Um, please continue to pray for Brother Joey as he, um, you know, there's days that he has pain. And he's got his good days and bad days. And um, so please pray for Brother Joey on that. And uh, please pray for Brother Ryan Payton. He is another minister he's another pre a young another young preacher on Facebook who preaches the word of God and the gospel uh, please pray for him and his family he uh, he and his family are great people I love them they're good friends of mine um, they just have their times when when the devil attacks amen so you know just keep them in prayer pray for brother Ryan and his ministry and um, <clears throat> please pray for me as as well. Please pray for me in my ministry and pray that God will have his way and will. Um, pray for these videos. Pray that God will take them and use them for his kingdom, for his glory, for his honor. Um, and then um, for those of you that might be watching um, from um, Church of Many Blessings, um, I know uh, a lot of you will sometimes tune in. Um, please, you know, continue to keep uh, your pastor, Ron, continue to keep your pastor in prayer, Pastor Ron, and, and I'm praying for him, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for the church, um, so let's, 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 let's lift them up in prayer, um, I know, um, Brother Chad, I know that if you're watching, you had a prayer request, uh, I hope you didn't mind me calling you out by name, I, I'm sorry, I probably should have asked you beforehand, but, um, you, uh, I know you had, I know one time you had a prayer request, so we'll, 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 we'll lift up your prayer request. I've been praying for you as well. Um, and then please pray for a fellow sister whose son is looking for a job and direction in life as well as a place to live. Amen. <coughs> and then <clears throat> we have a fellow sister who is, who has, who, uh, who wants prayer for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost? Amen. So let's lift up our let's let's continue to lift up our fellow brothers and sisters in prayer, and um, let's see here. Let's see. I think that's going to be it for prayer requests. Um, let's see here. I think yeah, that's going to be it for prayer requests. Okay, so today. This is Faith Part 16, and the reason why I call it Faith Part 16 
because it's the 16th part and faith, the faith chapter is, you know, Hebrews 11 is the great hall of faith. I call it the faith chapter. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about by faith, the walls of Jericho fell. Okay. <clears throat> now I mentioned a couple of things at the top of the broadcast and how so there's a there's a rapture correlation, but there's also a tithing correlation to it. Um, I do want to make this very abundantly clear. This is not intended for. This is not intended as a tithing message. Okay. Um, this is not a message to beg for money. This is not a message to. <clears throat> this is not a message to beg for money. This is not a message to. Um, you know, basically, you know, it's not a message to beg for money. Okay. Um, I don't like begging for money. I hate it. I, I just, I hate asking people for money. I hate asking people to even borrow money. Okay. I just, I, I don't like it. Okay. Um, I want to let you know where my heart is so that you guys don't, so that you all don't think that I'm trying to scam money off of you, okay? Um, I am a person that... Okay, so the reason why I'm doing this ministry... I'm doing this ministry purely on the fact that I'm doing it because I want to do it. I'm not doing it because I'm doing it for money, okay? As a matter of fact, I'd rather not have money. But I know there have been people who have decided to give to the ministry. Um, and there are even people that gave that this, that willingly or were willing to give me give to me during um, times of need for myself and family. Okay. And I'm gonna tell you that when it comes to tithing, <clears throat> tithing is strictly between you and God. I don't want to know. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, knowing that I'm the only person, yes, if you give through PayPal, I'm going to know who you are and how much you give, but I really don't care. Okay? It's, it's, you know, I'm okay, what I'm trying to say is, is that, you know, tithing is strictly between you and God. Okay? I'm not going to tell you that you need to give this much. I'm not going to tell you that you need to give in order for God to bless you. I mean, yes, God will God will honor and bless the fact that you're obedient to his word. Okay? But I'm not going to sit here and tell tell you guys that you know, you need to give me this much or you need to give me this, this and this. No. Tithing is strictly a free will thing. Okay, I, I, I really tend to think of it as if people give, people are giving out of their own free will. It's more of a free will offering. We'll put it that way. Okay, meaning that is on their own free will and is between them and God. Okay, so just putting it out there, there have been people who have free, have given free will offerings to this ministry, either to help with sermon audio or to even help me in my time of need. Okay. But other than that, that's it. Okay. That's it. That's, <clears throat> that's all I'm going to say about that. But, um, getting back to what I was saying is that the, I, this is not a tithing message, but I'm going to show you from scripture, from, from the scripture, from the scriptures, why, where I'm reading has a tithing significance. Okay. Um, so I, I just want to put that out there because I don't want you thinking that I'm just doing it for money and I'm just trying to fleece or scam people for money. That's not at all. That's not, that's not who I am. Okay. So anyways, <clears throat> we're going to be taking a look at a couple things today, uh, through scripture. Um, and uh, we're going to be kind of going everywhere in the Bible. So, I mean, we're going to, there's two main places where we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at a verse in Hebrews 
And if you got your Bibles, please turn, uh, please turn to Hebrews chapter eleven, verse thirty through thirty-one. Okay, Hebrews eleven through th uh, eleven thirty to thirty-one. And <clears throat> while you guys are turning there, um, so we're gonna be in Hebrews. I'm gonna kind of take you through James. I'm gonna kind of do a recap on 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 a particular thing, and then we're gonna be getting into uh, a couple other verses as well. Uh, but then we're also gonna also be mainly me and Joshua. So Hebrews and Joshua are gonna be the two places. But with that exception, with that, we're gonna be kind of going other places in the Bible as well. Okay, so bear with me. Um, it might be a lengthy message. It uh, the, uh, my notes are not that lengthy, so it's probably not. I mean, it probably won't be as lengthy it is as I say it is, but. Anyways, but I want to be sure to allow the Holy Ghost to do what he wants. Amen. Um, okay, so like I said, okay, so if you're in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 30 through 31, um, follow along with me, please. And it says this, By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were, com after they were com um, compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Now, I already touched on Rahab, the harlot. Okay, I already touched on her faith. Um, evidently, I touched on Rahab back during that first video. So if you want to go back and re-watch that one after this one... That'd be all fine with me. Um, kind of my fault. I should have done this in order, and I didn't do it in order. And um, I just sort of started with Rahab. <clears throat> now, the first part, I did talk about Rahab. Okay. Um, I also talked about, I also briefly mentioned Rahab. I'm not, I can't remember the part, but the message was entitled the first passover and there i mentioned about rahab and how she was protected okay now we're going to see i'm going to touch a little bit on basically how rahab and her family were saved out of the destruction of jericho okay and um so i'm 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 only going to get into a little bit with rahab i'm not going to get in in depth in uh, in depth Sorry, in depth of Rahab, okay? Um, but anyways, um, with that said, uh, turn with me to James chapter 2, verses 25 to 26. James chapter 2, 25 to 26. Likewise, also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Okay? <clears throat> now, that might seem contradictory that she was justified by works and not by faith. Because we're justified by, we're justified by faith. But, but it's not contradictory. Her works exemplified her faith. Amen? And um, really quickly, let's do a quick recap of Rahab, okay? Of, of why James said what he said, okay? Now, Rahab, okay, Joshua sent two spies in Jericho to spy out the land, okay? <clears throat> Rahab the harlot took those two men in and she hid them. And two officials came and questioned, a couple of officials came and questioned Rahab. And Rahab said, I don't know where they be. I don't know where they are. And, and, and she knew where they were and she hid them. And she outright lied to these, to these men, said she didn't know where, where she didn't know where, uh, they were. Now, <clears throat> of course, lying is not a good thing. Okay? So, 
I don't want you to take as, I don't want you to take, um, I don't want you to take what I'm about to say the wrong way, okay? But by faith, okay, she, she said what she said to keep these spies safe. She lied to keep the spies safe. You know, it's like Abraham. When Abraham lied and said, she's my sister. And it's funny because you find out that God blesses Abraham and God calls Abraham a prophet. Now, <clears throat> what Abraham did was Abraham told a half-truth, okay? He told a half-truth. I mean, it was a half-truth, half-lie, okay? Um, he said, this is my sister. When, in fact, there was a little bit of truth to that, okay? But it was his wife, okay? That's the part he didn't mention. And he did that to protect himself as well as his wife. Now... We see that with Rahab. She lied to protect these spies. Because by faith, she knew who these spies were. Okay? She knew that these spies were, f were the children of Israel. So she lied to keep them safe. <coughs> so, when the men left... Okay, Rahab goes and, and takes the spies and, they, and, and she sends them on her way. Okay, and they make a deal and, 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 and Rahab told them that, well, I've been kind to you. Can you please, you know, basically essentially return that kindness to me. And they made a promise that when they would come into the, the land of Jericho, that her her and her family would not perish in the in the collapse of Jericho. And for that, she had to put a scarlet thread in her window, and that anybody in that house would anybody who stayed in that house would survive, but anyone outside that house wouldn't. Okay, so. With that said, that would be the fulfillment. That well, that fulfillment, but that would be what was spoken in the New Testament in Acts chapter sixteen. Uh, Acts chapter sixteen by, by Paul. Okay, uh, so Acts chapter sixteen verse thirty one. Okay, and they said, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved." And thy house. Okay, so Rahab wasn't just the only one who was saved, but it was Rahab and her whole house. Okay, now in the context in, 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 in Acts 16, Paul and uh, what was it? Was it Silas? Paul and Silas? They were in jail. Okay, and there was an earthquake and the jailer was about to commit suicide. Okay, but Paul says, don't kill yourself. Okay, and and the, 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 the guard said, well, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, and this is where this verse comes in. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou should be saved in thy whole house, in, that, in thy house. Okay, so we, we see that one verse. We see that, that um, with Rahab, was a type and picture of that verse in the Old Testament. Okay? Now, in John chapter 4, verse 53, So the Father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. His whole house. Amen? So, like I said, I won't say, I won't say much on Rahab. Okay, because I did, I did speak on, I did speak on Rahab earlier in the series. That was like the first video I did, um, and also check out um, the first Passover because the first Passover will give you um, the first Passover. 
I do mention Rahab again, okay? <clears throat> um, so I just kind of want to just put this kind of in, like in a nutshell here real quick. Um, by faith, Rahab, okay, so by faith, Rahab saved these spies and sent them on their way back to Joshua, okay? Now, here's where we're going to be picking up. We're going to be picking up where the Lord instructs Joshua on how to take Jericho. Okay, so we're gonna be we're gonna pick we're gonna be picking up from kind of where it left off a little bit, um, but we're this is like four. Let's see here. This is four chapters later. Okay, because all that and with Rahab took place in chapter two, but then we're gonna fast forward a little bit to chapter six. <clears throat> Amen. So turn with me to Joshua chapter six. Joshua chapter six. And uh, we're going to be picking up here on, um, we're going to be picking up on uh, where God instructs um, Joshua on how to, um, to take Jericho, okay? Now, it says this in uh, Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Now, Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thou shalt do in six days. Okay, so for six days, they were to go around this one time. Okay, said so six times. Okay, once every once a day for six days they had to they they had to go around the city. Um, <clears throat> and seven priests shall bear the ark. Seven trumpets of rams' horns, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priest shall blow with trumpets. Okay. So on the seventh day. Okay. On the seventh day. They had to compass the city seven times on the seventh day. Now, if we, if we do the math. Let's say six times seven. Oh, no. Six plus seven. Okay. That's thirteen. So that means they had to go around that. They went around that city thirteen times. I'm not sure this. I'm not sure about the significance of that. If anybody knows the significance of that, please feel free to share that. I'm not sure, but that is very interesting. How they had to go around thirteen times. <clears throat> um. Now, let's see here. Okay, seven priests shall bear the ark. Seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people the people shall ascend up. Uh, what was I now? I just lost my spot. Shall ascend up every man straight before him. So I'm going to stop right there for a second. There's some very interesting wording in that passage. Okay. Now, I'm going to... Okay, so this is where... I'm going to be getting into why this correlates to the rapture. Okay. Let's go back to that verse and read that again. Okay. It says, And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, and when ye hear, when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. Okay. Trumpet and a great shout. 
These are the two characteristics that are going to happen when the rapture takes place. Okay? These are the two characteristics. The sound of a trumpet and a, and a shout. Okay? And it says, and the wall of the city fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up. Every man straight before him. So what this is saying is that there's going to be a shout and a trumpet, and the walls are going to come down, and every man is going to ascend up. Ascend up. What's going to happen when we get translated out of here? We're going to ascend up. Won't we? With that said, I'm going to show you from Scripture as to why I think this has a rapture correlation to it. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses, 20, uh, verses 52 to 53. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Now, we don't know what that last trump is. It just says, last trump. For the trumpet shall sound. Stop right there. The trumpet will sound. This is in correlation to the rapture. Okay, this is, this is the verse for the rapture. Okay, for the trumpet shall sound. What does it say in Joshua 5? When you hear the sound of the trumpet. So you see there's a trumpet being blown. Here. In Joshua 6. And we see. That at the rapture. Before we get raptured out of here. Or translated. I use the word translation. Because um, that's what the Bible uses. <clears throat> um, but it uses the word caught up too, but I, I use the word translated. But the translation, it says, for the trumpet shall sound. So we see that there is a trumpet being blown here in Joshua 6, but we will also see that well, there is going to be a trumpet that will sound before we get translated out of here and go home. Okay? For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. That is talking about the translation. Amen? That's the, that verse right there is talking about the translation. And so you see that there is a parallel between 1 Corinthians 15, 52 through 53 to Joshua chapter 6, verse 5. Okay? You see there's a correlation there. Okay. Now, um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Stop right there. What, what does it say in Joshua chapter 6, verse 5? Okay. It says, And it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horns. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And when the Lord comes to gather his people, okay, there's going to be, a, he's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, a shout. So we see that there is not just a trumpet being blown, but we also see in, in Genesis 6, 5, as well as in 1 Thessalonians 4, is that there is a shout that's taking place. Does that make sense with you guys? I don't want to make this complicated, but you see there is a parallel between uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 52 to 53, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17, to Joshua 6, 5. 
Amen? So, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we, we which are alive and remain shall be what? Caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay? It says in that verse, we shall be caught up together. Okay, at the end of verse 5 in Joshua, what does it say? It says, and the people shall ascend up every man. You know what it means to be caught up? It means that we are to ascend. That, that means that we're going to ascend up. That means we're going up. And it says in verse 5, the people shall be shall ascend up. Whew, excuse me. The pe It says that the people shall ascend up. And guess what? At the translation, we're going to be caught up. Does that make sense? So here, okay, so let me kind of just put this in a nutshell for you. Joshua chapter 6 verse 5, okay, is going to talk about, is talking about how they will compass, they, uh, they will, um, they will blow the horn, the trumpet, okay? They will blow the trumpet, there's going to be a shout. After that, there's going to be a People are going to ascend up. Wow. Okay. In the translation, the Lord's going to, the Lord's going to come down with the shout of the archangel and the last, and the uh, uh, trumpet is going to be blown. And what's going to happen? We're going to be ascending up to meet the Lord forever in the clouds. Wow, isn't that amazing? So we see that Joshua chapter 6 verse 5 is a type and picture of the translation. And we see that from scripture. Okay, that is scriptural. Um, so like I said, in that passage, people are going to ascend up. Okay, now we see this again. Um, I've already mentioned 1 Thessalonians 4.17. Okay. Then we which are alive shall remain and be caught together with him. Okay, but in Second Thessalonians chapter two verse one, as is now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. That's talking about the translation as well. Okay, our gathering together unto him. How is that? And, and by the way, that's what's that's what's happening with John and, and Joshua. That's what's going to happen with Rahab and her family in Joshua 6. Okay? Now, whew. when we ascend up, we will be caught up together with the Lord forever. Okay? So, again, we see that we see this in Genesis 6, verse 5, that it is a picture of the rapture. Amen? So with that said, let's go ahead and keep reading. <clears throat> um, it says, And Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the Ark of the Lord. And it came to pass... When Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets, and the reward, uh, and the re reward came after the Ark. The priest going on and blowing the blowing with the trumpets, and Joshua had commanded the people, saying, "Ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice; neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then ye shall shout." So the ark, 
when the Lord compassed the city going about at once, and they came into the camp and, and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But the rewarder came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. Okay? So what they're so they compassed the city as what the Lord instructed Joshua. They compassed the city once around the city for six days. Now I want you guys to keep in mind, Joshua is indeed a type and picture of Jesus Christ, isn't he? You know why? Because Joshua was one of the set was one of the uh, there are two people that said that we can go into that land and take it. And Joshua was one of them. Amen. So he had a different and and Moses sent twelve. I think uh, he sent twelve people to go up to spy in the land. And two of them came back with a good report. And one of them was Joshua. And Joshua was the one that led Israel into the land. And we see that... Okay, so if you take a look... Um, and Peter talks about how in the days when the ark... It says in the days when the ark was a preparing... Well, where, when that was, was when the ark, the, the chapter that it was, was Genesis chapter 6. Okay, so Genesis chapter, so 6 can be the, is, is, is the number, or can be the number for preparation. Why? Because when the ark was a preparing, the ark was being prepared in Genesis chapter 6. Okay, the book of Joshua is the sixth book is the sixth book in the Old Testament and is the book that tells us and shows us the preparation of Israel's inheritance. In other words, we see from the book of Joshua that we're seeing that God, that Joshua is preparing them to receive their inheritance. And again, we see in, Gen in, in Joshua chapter 6, God is 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 preparing Joshua to take Jericho, overtake Jericho. Wow, isn't that amazing? So six can be the number for preparation. As we see here. Amen. So in verse 15, and it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day, encompassed the city after the same manner seven times, only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets. Okay, remember, at the translation, there's going to be a tr the la at the last trumpet. Okay? And the, se and, and, and the shout of the archangel. What's going to happen? The dead in Christ will shall rise first. Then we together who are left alive and will remain will be caught up with him. Amen. So, and it, and it came to pass at the seventh day when the priest blew the trumpet. Okay. You see, blew the trumpets. Okay. Joshua, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Okay. So we see trumpets being blown and the shouting. They're getting ready to they're getting ready to take take over the uh they're getting ready to overtake the city. Okay. And um and the city shall be accursed. Even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are 
with her in her in the house because she hid the messengers that we sent. So we see here that everything in Jericho is going to be accursed. The only one that is going to be left alive is Rahab and her family. Let's just say ones. The only ones that are going to be left alive are Rahab and her family. Why? Because by faith, she hid the messengers that Joshua sent. So Joshua is making good on that promise. Okay? Now, um, if you remember... If you remember what that promise was, okay, going back to Joshua chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. Now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I've shewed you kindness, that ye will sh also shew kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token, and that ye will save my al save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered, uh, the men answered her, our life for yours. If you utter not this business, not if you utter not this, our business, and it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that we will kind, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Okay. So we see that what we just read is that Joshua is going to make good on that promise. Okay, Joshua is going to make good on that promise. And by the way, there's something that, there's something that needs to be said there. The Lord Jesus Christ always makes good with his promises. Amen. Joshua made good on his promise to save Rahab. Joshua is a type and picture of Jesus Christ. And by the way, you know what you know you know what the promises of God are? The promises of Jesus Christ? It's this book. They're in this book. Amen. In this book, in this Bible. Okay? And guess what? How much more if Joshua made good made good on his promise, how much more do you think the Lord Jesus Christ? who is God in the flesh, makes good on his promise towards you. Amen. Anyways, so we see that, that Joshua is making good on his promise. Now let's continue reading. And ye and any wise keep yourselves from that accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it, but all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord, they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Okay, so listen. I also mentioned that there is a tithing aspect to this. Okay, there's a tithing principle. Okay. Now, we know that we need to bring our tithes into our storehouse. Amen? And if you, th if you think about this and the tithing aspect. Now, I don't know how many cities. I've heard that there were 10 cities they went through. I'm not sure if that's true or not. But what I do know is this. Jericho is the very first city they came to and conquered. Jericho is the first city. And God says, with all, with all the spoils that you get, you are not to hold back any. You are to put it in the treasury of the Lord. You are to put it in the treasury of the Lord. That, let me tell you something. That right there is a tithe. God said, you're not to hold anything back, but all this is mine. 
So, we see that Israel was instructed that with all the spoils they get, they were not to keep any. They were to, they were to bring it all. They were to tithe it. They were to give it to God. Amen. And you know why? Because God gave them an increase. You know what the increase was? God, well, first of all, well, first of all, the increase was the land. But God gave that city into their hands. And all God was asking was for all the spoils of this one city to go into the treasury. Amen. That's all God was asking. You see that in here, in, in this first city. He wanted everything in the treasury. Okay. But we find out that someone, one of the Israel, Israelites, kept back. And when they kept back and disobeyed God, they were, they, Joshua and his men were losing battles. They were losing their battles against all these other people. They were losing. So they brought a curse that needed to be eradicated. They troubled the whole camp of Israel because someone kept back. And they shouldn't have kept back. They should have put forward into the treasury of the Lord. Amen. Now, um, Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 to 20. Okay. As per tithing. Okay. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. Think about bread and wine. That's communion, isn't it? That's, that's That right there is a type and picture of communion. Amen. Um, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, said, Blessed be Abram and the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Who gave who tithes? Abram gave Melchizedek, the high priest, tithes. You know why? Because he wanted to give tithes. Tithes of all. Amen. Leviticus 27.30 And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Deuteronomy 14.22 Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, and that the field bringeth forth year by year. Okay? And we see that God had delivered Jericho. That was an increase, right? Well, God wanted that first part of that increase, didn't he? That is why God wanted Israel to give all that spoil into the treasury of the Lord. Because that was the first part of that increase now they were able to go on and keep the other spoils if i remember correctly but it was only jericho that they had to give into the treasury of the lord okay so we see that that god wanted israel to give the first of their increase amen now Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Uh, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Improve me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that shall not be an room enough to receive it. That there shall not be room to receive it. Okay? God wants us to bring the our ties into our storehouse. What's your storehouse? The storehouse is your church. Amen. Is your church. Bring all the ties into your storehouse. And God was wanting Israel to bring the first of their increase into the treasury of the Lord. Amen. Now, if that makes sense, I hope that makes sense. Um, 
Now, we see clearly that if God wanted Israel to give the first of their increase, okay, the first of the increase into the treasury, that is a tithing principle. Why? Because tithe means 10%. Okay, tithe means 10%. So, God wanted Israel to give all the spoils from Jericho into the treasury of the Lord. Why? Because it is a picture of tithing. So it is indeed a tithing principle. Amen. Um, so with that said, we'll continue. Uh, I don't want to spend too much on that, but we'll, we'll continue on. Um, and, by, and like I said, if they, hold, if they held anything back, they'd be in trouble. They would lose their battles. They'd have troubled times. Amen. They'd have troubled times. And they did. They they couldn't win their battles because so because someone left back their tithes. Someone left kept back and they troubled the whole camp. And and God had informed Joshua that he had to get it fixed. Otherwise, I mean, otherwise they would have been they would have been in trouble if they didn't get if they didn't have if they didn't get it fixed. So Joshua had to get it. Joshua had to instruct the people to get it fixed. Amen. So, um, continuing on, Joshua chapter six. We're almost done. Joshua chapter six, verse twenty. Okay. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass. When the people heard the sound of the trumpet, now remember, think of it as the trans. Okay, think of the trans, the, the the rapture. Okay, trumpet and shout. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both men. Man and woman, young, old, and ox, and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath, as he swore unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had, and they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. That right there is another picture of the translation. What happened? Okay. Think about it. Joshua is a type and picture of Jesus Christ. Here's what happened. The trumpet blew. There was a great shout. They killed and wiped out every, most of everybody in the cattle. Joshua said, go and take Rahab and her family out. Take her out of the city. Okay? Take her out. It says, and, and they left them without the camp. They left, they essentially, Rahab left the city. Because the city was destroyed, so there was nothing left. Wow. And, and by the way, when the Lord comes back to get his people, he will come back with his angels, which are the reapers. Let's go to that real quick, okay? Let's go to that. Um, Matthew, ter Matthew 13, verse 39. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. So I'm going to tell you something. When the Lord comes back to, trans to translate his people out of here, he's going to send the angels with the, with the, with the voice of the archangel and a shout. 
and the blowing of the trumpet, the last trump, the angels are going to gather, are going to gather God's people and take them out. Just as Joshua instructed the two spies to go and get Rahab and her family and bring them out of the city. Wow. Isn't that amazing? So we see that Joshua 6 is indeed a type and picture of the rapture. Amen. It is a type and picture of the rapture. Let's, let's continue on. Um, verse 24. And they burnt the city with fire, and all that there was were, were therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and, and of iron, they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's house and all that she had. And she dwelt in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers with messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Joshua adjourned them at the time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that will riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. And he he shall lay the foundation thereof and his firstborn and his and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of of it. So the Lord was with Joshua and his fame was noised throughout all the country. Amen. Now I want to I want to close with this. Okay. It says, and Joshua adjourned them at at the time, saying, "Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof, and his firstborn and his youngest son shall he set up the gate of." Okay. We see this in First Kings. Okay. Really quickly, First Kings. Turn with me to First Kings chapter 16. First Kings chapter 16. First Kings chapter 16. Verse 34. Okay. First Kings 16, 34. It says, In his days did Heal the Bethelite build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof, and his youngest son, Segub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. Amen. So we see that in 1 Kings, 1 uh, Kings sixteen thirty four. Now, the reason why I think Joshua s said, Cursed be the man before the Lord, was because Jericho was a cursed, basically, Jericho was going to become desolate. It, didn't, it shouldn't have been rebuilt. Now, maybe I'm wrong on that, but God cursed it. God cursed that city. And so for anyone to actually rebuild it would be cursed before the Lord. Amen. Um, so we see here, essentially, in Joshua chapter 6, there is indeed a tithing principle. But in a bigger picture, we also see that this is a type and picture of the translation. Why? Because there was a shout the son of a trumpet and Rahab and her family were coming out of Jericho. Okay. Think of it this way at the trans uh -huh. at the translation. Okay. Let's go back to that verse at the translation. Okay. Um, first Corinthians 15 verse first Corinthians 15 verses 52 through 53. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, okay, remember, there was a trumpet that was blown and a great shout, okay, and, and 
when they took Jericho, okay? But we see here, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible should put on incorruptible, and this mortal should put on immortality. Um, First Thessalonians 4, uh, 4, 16 through 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Amen. And with that said, I do want to ask this question, okay? Are you ready to meet the Lord in the air? Are you ready? Are you ready for that time to be translated out of here? Because if not, today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. Okay? Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, and that God raised him from the dead, on the third day you'll be saved. Amen. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, now at the beginning I played that one, I played that that kind of short thing at the beginning. Okay. That's my king. Okay. Is Jesus Christ your king today? Because if not, you can know for sure. And it's simple. Okay. You just need to go before the Lord with a sincere heart. With a sincere heart. You go before the Lord and admit that you are a sinner. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Ask Him to cleanse you and wash you with His blood. Ask Him to come into your heart and life. Ask Him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Ask Him to fill you with His Spirit. And most importantly, and, 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 and thank Him for saving you. You have not because you ask not. Knock and the door should be open. Amen. Really quickly, turn, turn with me to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. <clears throat> Jesus answered, uh, John chapter 3, verse 3. Okay. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay. What does it mean to be born again? Well, to be born again is exactly what I just said. To, to repent of your sin. And ask the Lord to come into your heart and life. Ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your, of your life. Amen. To turn away from your to turn away from this world, and to ask the Lord into your heart and life by by admitting that you are a sinner, repenting of your sins, asking Him to cleanse you, asking asking Him to come inside your heart and to fill you with His Spirit. And I'll tell you something: when you become born again, God will seal you with his spirit and you are sealed to the day of redemption amen you are sealed um listen i love you guys um i don't want you to take my word for things amen i want i want you to take everything i said and i want you to match it with this with with your bible with with the king with your with your bible with the bible okay if what i say does not match with what the Bible says. 
then let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. If I'm wrong, then I pray and ask that the Lord will correct me, rebuke, and show me where I'm wrong, that I might repent. And one of these days, I will have to stand before him and give an account as to everything I said and did in this body, whether good or bad. Okay? But if I'm right, then I pray that he will show you what I'm talking to you about. Amen? Um, listen. Um, I want you guys to... You know, just I want you if you don't know the Lord and if you don't know the Lord and if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if Jesus Christ is not your king. Okay, if if or if 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 there's someone here today that needs to get right with the with the Lord. Okay, I'm gonna play a, a, a kind of a hymn of invitation. Saved by the blood. I'm gonna play I'm gonna play it a couple times. Okay. And while this is playing, I want you if the Lord is if the Lord is tugging on your heart, if he's asking you if he's asking you, or if the Lord is dealing with you on something, okay, go to him. Go to him and, and get it settled today. Whether you need to get something right, or if you just, if you're not saved, and if you want to be saved. Amen. So while this is playing, and I'll, if the Lord is dealing with you, please, let's, please get it taken care of as soon as you, you know, please get it taken care of during this time. Amen. And with that said, we'll go ahead and get started. I love you guys. Amen. Um, listen, um, there are going to be times I'm going to, I'll, you know, there are going to be times I'll preach hard and there are going to be times that I, I won't, you know, just depending on whatever the Lord wants me to preach on. Amen. But, you know, whatever the Lord needs me to preach on, I'll have to preach on because I have to be obedient to Him. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to be answering to you. I'm going to be answering to God. Amen. Um, I want to thank you all for tuning in this morning. Thank you for sort of bearing with me. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to, on Pastor Brandon Live, we're going to be doing, um, continuing our series in the Ten Commandments. Keep me on prayer for that. Because um, I tell you what, the devil's not going to like it very well. So, pray for me for tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be... Uh, I got to work tomorrow, kind of the first part of the day. But once I get back, I'll, I'll do my broadcast. But uh, pray for me. Uh, pray that God will pray for this. Please pray for these videos. Pray for the, um, the messages and pray that God will have his way and will. And, uh, you know, listen, I love you guys. God bless you. If you're able to tune in tomorrow, uh, feel free to please tune in tomorrow. And, um, but anyways, with that said, I love you guys. God bless you. If the Lord willing, we will see you tomorrow. Love you guys. See you. Bye.